Kathmandu, capital of Nepal. Few Westerners have ever seen this ancient city where Buddhist and Hindu gods keep eternal watch. But now outsiders have come, strangers bearing even stranger equipment, five tons of it. Their purpose, to scale the tallest mountain on the face of the earth, Mount Everest. Supplies have arrived at Kathmandu by plane, but from here the going will be on foot, an uphill trek of 175 miles over terrain that would tax a mountain goat, all just to get to the foothills of Everest. Since 1921, expeditions have been trying without success to climb Mount Everest. Always attempts have been made from the north, from Tibet. But now, Nepal is to be the launching site for an historic first try at conquering the giant from the south. The grueling journey continues for three weeks, and each day the setting up of a temporary camp is a signal for the natives to gather. They're curious about these strangers who are willing to risk their lives simply to climb a mountain. As for the strangers, their big concern at the moment is the local cooking. Payday. It's time to settle accounts with the 300 and some odd porters from Kathmandu and to send them home. From this point on, the climbers will proceed alone, accompanied only by 22 Sherpas, the famed Nepalese mountaineers, and also by the prayers of those remaining behind. Under the brow of Everest, two and a half miles below the summit, a base camp is established. From here up, daily progress will be measured in feet, and a series of additional camps will have to be set up if the climbers are to get close enough for a final assault. The approach to Everest lies through a steep, frozen cascade known as the Ice Fall, where millions of tons of ice are constantly on the move, shifting and splitting apart without warning. A huge crevasse blocks the way, an obstacle that forced a previous expedition to turn back. Swinging across won't work. The solution is to go down and then climb up the opposite side. The precarious bridgehead is strengthened and men and equipment come across. The vital chain of supply camps can move forward. Believe it or not, things have been relatively easy so far. But now the way is open for the real struggle to begin. The next step is to climb the face of Lhotse, the giant neighbor of Everest. The Lhotse face soars above Camp 5, ending in a ridge that leads directly to the summit of Everest, a ridge named the South Call. Can it be reached? The Lhotse face is 4,000 feet high, steep and treacherous. And in this rarefied atmosphere, even the smallest movement is beginning to call for tremendous effort. While 
Although the critical Lotzi attempt is underway, there is little for the others to do but wait, watch, and make plans for the final assault up the knife-like ridge to the summit, five and a half miles high. South Call has been reached. There's no time to lose. At any moment, the monsoon will come bringing 100 mile winds and paralyzing cold and making an approach almost impossible. The precious oxygen bottles are checked. The failure of this life-giving equipment would spell disaster for any attempt on the summit. The first stages of the monsoon are beginning. It is now or never for the final assault. Slowly, the climbers advance toward the top of the world. Can mere men overcome the relentless forces of nature can they endure the bitter cold that sears and penetrates, even through many layers of clothing? Can they contend with altitude that robs a man of energy and willpower and makes him move in a slow motion dream? Can they bear the blinding wind, wind that pushes a man back no matter how desperately he wants to go forward? The monsoon is in full force, and the crushing wind sweeping down the south ridge creates a barrier that cannot be passed. At this point, even superhuman will is not enough. More than 28,000 feet high, the highest men have ever reached until this moment, but still not high enough. The summit is 900 feet away. Time and oxygen have run out, and so has human strength. Even though the goal is in sight, to go farther is to die. They must turn back. The gallant Swiss attempt of 1952 has failed, but the key to Everest has been found. And one day, Tensing the Sherpa and Edmund Hillary the New Zealander will stand victorious on the windswept roof of the world.